Hey gear seekers, I'm Nick. Today we're taking a look at one of MSI's brand new Z790 boards that supports Intel's next generation CPUs. But before that, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button because, you know, that's a nice thing to do. What we're gonna do is our usual thing with the motherboard videos. They're not reviews, they're just overviews so we can take a bit of a look at what physically comes in the box and all of the features on this board. Let's jump in. All right, ladies and gents, here it is, the MSI MEG Z790 Ace Max. Let's do our usual thing. Let's get the motherboard out of the box so we can take a little bit of a closer look at everything that comes with this brand new board for Intel's next generation CPUs. First of all, we've got some thermal probes. You can put these in the case. You can let these adjust fans and whatnot based on the temperature inside your case. There's also a bunch of RGB extension cables for different types of RGB. We've got a four pin 12 volt RGB splitter and another RGB cable in there as well. There's also this, this is a front panel breakout cable, just in case you wanted to hide all your front panel connections for your lights and all your switches. There's also two of these DisplayPort cables. This board has Thunderbolt 4. This allows you to plug your graphics card into your motherboard and use the Thunderbolt ports on the motherboard for Thunderbolt displays, so like an Apple Cinema display or something like that. There's also a bunch of M.2 clips for the M.2 slots on this board. There's lots on this board, we'll get into that. There's a bunch of documentation as well, quick installation guide, some regulatory stuff. There's also some stickers to help you label some of the cables inside of your build as well. There's this USB stick, gone are the days of circular plastic discs with drivers on them. They're now on a USB stick, very, very handy. There's also some SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. There are four of these in total, so lots of spares just in case. There's also the antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 7. That's right, all these new boards we're seeing will have Wi-Fi 7, but enough of that. Let's unsheath this new board and take a bit of a closer look at the MEG Z790 Ace Max. Let's jump in. First of all, we've got front panel audio header, a four pin 12 volt RGB header. We've got five PWM fan headers on the bottom, that's insane. There's also a three pin DC fan header in case you're using a water pump. There's a lot going on here. There's also some connectors for those thermal probes that I showed earlier. There's an RGB switch so you can turn it off and a BIOS switch because it's got dual BIOS. There's also two USB 2.0 front panel headers for like RGB controls and whatnot. A reset button, a power button, and the connectors for your front panel lights and switches and all that jazz, and a three pin five volt addressable RGB header. On the right hand edge of the board, there's six SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or spinning RAS drives. There's two USB 3.2 type A right angle headers. I really like right angle headers. It's about time we see more of this. There's a USB type C front panel header. There's a PCIe power connector to send some extra juice to the slots. There's a right angled USB type C front panel header as well. The 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new motherboard. There's two more PWM fan headers up here and there's a diagnostic LED array in the corner as well. But if we take a close look at the corner, you can see that LED array as well as the LED screen. There's also two more three pin addressable RGB headers and another PWM fan header. There's two eight pin EPS power connectors. They've actually moved this to the top right hand side of the board. In terms of PCIe slots, there's three by 16 size slots, but the top one is a PCIe Gen 5 by 16. The middle one is a PCIe Gen 5 by eight slot and the bottom one is a PCIe Gen 4 by eight slot. So lots of PCIe connectivity on this board. For VRM layout, this is a 24 plus one plus two phase digital VRM setup with 105 amp smart power stages. This is a very beefy VRM layer and you can see that the heat sinks here are crazy. There's also a heat pipe connecting both as well. This board features Intel's LGA 1700 socket which supports Intel's 12th and 13th gen CPUs as well as Intel's incoming next generation. As you can see, the Ace Max has a full cover backplate. This isn't just for looks, this is to help with thermal dissipation. Most higher end boards you find around the place will have these full cover back plates. They're not just for show, they have a function. In terms of RAM support, the Z790 Ace Max supports up to 192 gigs of DDR5 memory, up to 7,800 mega transfers overclocked. 
There's something else that I notice on this board as well. You'll notice the clips for the RAM slots have been moved to the bottom because of those new EPS power connectors above it. All right, let's get the heat sinks off for the M.2 slots. This board has a lot of storage and the top one can be a bit difficult to get off, but for M.2 slots, we've got a PCIe Gen 5x4 slot up the top and the rest are PCIe Gen 4x4 M.2 slots. There's five slots in total and there's two down the bottom of the board as well that are connected with that giant heat sink that we removed previously. You'll also notice that these have the clips so there's all toolless M.2 installation now, and this one's got like a MagSafe connector for the RGB lighting on the top heatsink. In terms of rear I.O., we've got a clear CMOS button, a BIOS flash rack button, and a smart button, which you can map in the BIOS, two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapters, heaps of USB type A. There's also USB type C. There's Thunderbolt 4, which can be used for Thunderbolt 4 devices like audio interfaces and anything that uses Thunderbolt 4. You can also use that as pass-through with the two mini display port connectors for a Thunderbolt monitor. There's antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 7 and a full audio interface with optical and speed of out that supports 7.1 digital surround sound and an integrated IO shield. I hope you enjoyed this first look and overview of the MSI MEG Z790 Ace Max. I am really digging the overall design of this board. The fact that this has five M.2 slots is kind of bonkers. When did we start to get boards with that many M.2 slots? It's like a dream for me. I love boards with lots of storage options. We should almost get rid of SATA at this point because M.2 drives are relatively cheap and if there's more boards like this with, let's say, infinite M.2 slots, what's the point in plugging any other storage in, right? So, yeah, I think it's great. The overall design and aesthetics of the Ace Max is really, really cool. It's kind of like all the lighting on it is a screen. And in person, I don't know how it translates to video, but when I'm sitting here looking at it, it looks awesome. I really, really dig the design. There's only one thing that I don't like about these top end boards from all manufacturers is EATX. Why has that become so common? Like if we take a look at the reasoning for it, I guess you could say because the bottom two M.2 slots are quite long and they want to support longer drives. But when do we see drives that are bigger than 2280 in the first place, right? It's not very common. And this little accent here on the board, it looks like it should be an M.2 slot, but it's just a random piece of metal. It, it has no purpose. Like it doesn't do anything. It's very, very strange. I thought it was an M.2 slot and it almost looks like they wanted it to be an M.2 slot based on some of the surface mount stuff, but it's not, it's pointless. Yeah, I think this is definitely one of the next generation Intel boards that you should be looking out for if you wanna go for a top end board, if you don't want something like the Godlike. The only thing missing really from this board that I would say is 10 gig ethernet MSI on the Ace boards from now on, give us 10 gig ethernet, it's just, it's gonna become a standard soon enough. Might as well jump on the train and give it to us now. As for the availability for the Z790 Ace Max, it's hard to say, and I don't know what the pricing is gonna be either, but I will update the description of this video when you watch this in the future, because this is one of the first examples of this board that we're seeing out in the wild at the moment, and we're lucky enough here at Gear Seekers to get boards really, really early to show you guys because that's what we do, you know? We take a look at motherboards. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now. And if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there, down below. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek, and this is a very nice looking board. Also, I noticed, I think I probably talked about this somewhere else in the video, but the DDR5 RAM slots, the clips have been moved to the bottom of the slot. I noticed this because the EPS power connectors are on the right hand side of the board, not the left. That is different, very, very different. And if I'm being honest, I think I like that better because when you're building a PC and you're running like the 24 pin power cable up the back of the motherboard tray, it makes way more sense for it to be on this side of the board as opposed to this edge, which sometimes you just need longer cables and it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. So, you know, 
yeah, just some thoughts and some observations for a guy who's got thousands of motherboards. Thanks for watching.